silence to remember Sarah. They'd been told not to come. But at 6 p.m. when the vigil should have been starting, hundreds surrounded the bandstand in Clapham Common. Crowds were then urged to leave. Instead, they stayed on what began as a peaceful moment of mourning became more of a protest for some. People are angry, specifically women. This is a vigil. This was just supposed to be everyone paying their respects. It's, it's a sharing of grief. Um, it's, it, people are unhappy. We came down to show our respects, uh, to pay our respects and to show that we... We shouldn't be stopped from doing whatever we want to do. We've, we won't be limited by it. As far as the police came, you know, they're there, the presence is felt, and I think the presence of the people is felt as well. And at the heart of it is Sarah, and that's all we should all focus on, really, and, and keep our minds on her. The unofficial event unfolded on the day Wayne Cousins appeared at Westminster Magistrates Court, charged with the kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard. He sat in a grey tracksuit with his head bowed as details of the case against him were read out. The serving police officer, who's 48, was charged on Friday night after confirmation came that the remains found in Woodland near Ashford in Kent were those of the 33-year-old marketing executive. The court heard how Sarah was seen on CCTV a number of times as she walked home on the night of March the 3rd. During that journey, she spoke to her boyfriend on the phone for 14 minutes. But since that call, there's been no further activity on her mobile and it's yet to be found. Permission to hold the vigil had been refused by the police due to lockdown rules. And a failed attempt to get that decision overthrown in the High Court led organisers to cancel. But all day people came. Among them, the Duchess of Cambridge, who wanted to pay her respects. From day one of planning, we had things in place, COVID marshals with support from the council, um, teams of stewards, um, and we'd received all sorts of, uh, you know, donations of high-vis jackets and things like that to support that process. Um, and obviously now, um, none of that w will be in place, and, and that, that is a real shame because we, we could have tried to guarantee people's safety to an extent. But the Metropolitan Police said there were other safe ways to mourn Sarah, adding in a statement, We take no joy in this event being cancelled, but it's the right thing to do given the real and present threat of COVID-19. But it was quite clear that there was a need for many to come and highlight the safety fears many women feel as they walk the streets. When people are questioning the police's approach to dealing with violence against women and their responsibility to take these crimes seriously, I just think it's a bit tone deaf of them, frankly, and I really hope that there's some soul searching going on in the Met today about how they've got this wrong. Searches by forensic teams continued throughout the day in Kent as it emerged in court that Sarah's remains had been found in a builder's bag and were identified using dental records. The man accused of killing her will appear at the Old Bailey on Tuesday. But as cousins prepared for another night in a cell, in Clapham, as across the country, candles were lit in Sarah's memory. The moment chosen, 9.30pm, close to the time on that dreadful night a week and a half ago, when Sarah was last seen alive. Emma Birchley, Sky News.